Hi everyone, it's Patty Alaka back with some tools for living. I hope that you're feeling well today, but even if you're not, I'm really glad that you've chosen to spend this time with me. I'm really excited about what the Lord has put on my heart to speak about today. Today we're going to go over the three little letters, three little epistles at the back of the Bible called 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. Have you ever read through them? They're just so beautiful, particularly if you are going through a hard time in a relationship. I love reading these words. Um, it's so exciting. The Lord has so much to say about it. But before we get started, let's go to prayer as the Lord reminds us to pray without ceasing. Heavenly Father, wonderful Lord Jesus, glorious Holy Spirit, we come to your throne on our knees in humility today, Lord. We thank you for all the ways that you're working in our lives. Um, we thank you for bringing me and whoever is watching this video into this space, Lord. I ask that you continue to heal us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and relationally, Lord. Teach us what it is that you would like us to know about relationships. Uh, not my words, but your words, Lord. Not my will, but your will, Lord. We ask all of this in your powerful and mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So thank you again for uh, joining me today. So the Apostle John, um, he referred to himself, if you read through the Gospel of John, which is in the beginning of the, um, the New Testament, he refers to himself as the beloved apostle. Very often he writes about himself and describing himself as the most loved apostle. So, oh, I get goosebumps when I think about this. So he was younger. He was known to be younger than all the other apostles. And he had such a beautiful relationship with our wonderful Lord Jesus on planet Earth in the here and now. He was able to touch him, feel him, see him, know him, study under him. He interned under him. He learned our wonderful Lord Jesus's ways while our wonderful Lord Jesus was actually on this planet in a physical body. And what um, the letters in the back, the epistles in the back of the Bible called 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John, are letters, epistles that were written when he was much older. In fact, he refers to himself as an elder. And um, I just love uh, reading through these words. It's really like healing balm um, for our souls, particularly when you've gone through a hardship in a relationship, if you've gone through conflict in a relationship. You know, the Lord tells us that we are going to experience conflict in this world, but he wants us to be skilled in dealing with these conflicts. So when we read through these words, I want you to think about someone in your life, a relationship in your life, uh, whether it be past or present, that may have some you know, leftover stuff there that you really want to clean out and just allow the Lord to work through you and heal these circumstances. Um, so I like to think about uh, 1 John or 1 John as um, really taking the time to get right with the Lord. Remember, the Lord has given us a threefold path. First is the Trinity, the Father that made us, the Son that saved us, and the Holy Spirit that lives within us is with us at all times, always. And all we need to do is to call him into our heart and ask him to help us in all these circumstances. So that's the first part of the threefold path. The second part is his living word. The Lord wants us to keep our nose, our eyes, our ears fully aligned in his word, learning from him how to be in this world. You know, he asks us to be in this world, but not so much of this world. And sometimes we're in those situations where we have a choice between following the Lord or following the world. He wants us to follow him. So that's the second part of the threefold path. And the third part is to um, follow the body of Christ Get yourself in a really good church, but test the spirit of that church and make sure that the words that are coming out of the pastor's mouth or the priest's mouth 
um, is really aligned with the Holy Spirit. So that's what um, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John go into. We're going to go into it a little bit more as we read through these words. But what I'd like to think about is that the 1 John is really about us getting right with the Lord. So think about your circumstances as we read through these words. In 2 John, it's more about um, getting right with, after we've gotten right with the Lord, how is it that we can get right in our relationships? What is it that we need to do to be more loving, to bring more of his love and light and grace into this world? And 3 John is really about testing the spirit of um, those that we interact with and make sure that those that we are uh, receiving advice from, that we use our wisdom and discernment to know whether or not it's from the Lord. If it all lines up with the Lord, great, then, then take in that wisdom and allow it to grow you and your fruit of the Spirit. But if it doesn't line up with the Lord, there's a reason for that. Um, I feel like I can talk forever and we'll see where this video goes. Um, but what I really want to encourage you is to just think about yourself and your relationship with the Lord right now as we go through these words. So we're going to start off with uh, 1 John verse 1. And he says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes. Now remember, this is um, John the Apostle saying, I actually saw this with my literal eyes as I was studying under our Lord Jesus when he was on planet Earth as a human being in a human body, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. So he touched him. He touched out. He literally touched our Lord Jesus. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and which appeared to us. We proclaim to you that we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. I get goosebumps when I read this. I don't know about you, but the Apostle John is saying, hey, I want you to know that I literally touched with my very own hands our wonderful Lord Jesus. I studied under him and I'm teaching you at an older age what that was like and what he taught us all about. So we'll pick up with uh, verse 5. Uh, and this is 1 John 1, 5. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Let's take a pause for a moment. What he's saying is our wonderful Lord Jesus, Father, Son, Holy Spirit is light, is pure, pure, pure light. And if we follow him, we can bring his light into our being, into our mind, our body, and our spirit. And we can bring his light into this world. So um, what he's saying is that the world is full of darkness and our wonderful Lord, Father, Son, Holy Spirit is light. And he's inviting us to follow him to be more in the light. Picking up with verse eight, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not with us. 
So this is an invitation. He reminds us that if we follow the Lord and we follow the ways he wants us to be, we won't sin because we will want to connect with his light, his love, and his grace. But we do live in the world and maybe sometimes we do sin and sin means make a mistake. And this is an invitation to turn around, to repent, to ask the Lord for forgiveness and trust that our wonderful Lord Jesus will indeed forgive us for all the mistakes that we make because he atones that for us. So now we're on chapter two. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ and the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for ours, but the sins for the whole world. Let's take a pause for a moment and just think about any mistakes that you may have made in any of the relationships that you're focusing on right now. The Lord forgives us. Ask him to forgive you for that sin. Put that at the foot of the cross and trust that he will give us his grace, his mercy, and his peace in exchange for that sin as we choose to make better choices as we move on. And I want you to think about the person in relationship that you might be in conflict with. What might be some of the sins that they have done or mistakes that they have made? Give them a room and space to grow. You know, everyone in the world makes mistakes, every single person. And it's our work to have compassion and understanding and trust that the Lord is not only working through us, but the Lord will also work through the other person in relationship. I have found through the years of working with clients um, and in my older years that there really is um, three reasons why a conflict may not be resolved in a relationship. One is that um, the person is not following our wonderful Lord as the Lord wants us to reconcile. Two might be their number is just really low. You know, as we've talked about in the past on that zero to 10 scale, where 10 is the best we've ever felt in our life and zero is the worst, their numbers might still be very, very low. And um, it will be their work to increase that number to a higher number. Then when they're above a five, they will be able to see things more clearly from a higher perspective and they will be able to allow the Lord's light, love, and grace in. And the third reason may be why there's still conflict is because maybe they're still following the world and not the Lord. Um, and also, they may be in fear. There's so much fear around, but fear is not from the Lord. Fear is often when there's a lower number. So for all of us, we're encouraged to raise our number to a higher level, whatever it is that we need to do to uh, bring the Lord uh, his light, his love, his grace into our being so we can see things from a higher perspective. But also whoever we're in conflict with, let's continue to pray for them and ask that the Lord will give them a fresh new revelation about um, all their circumstances so that this conflict can just be part of the past. It can work through, it can be resolved. Obviously, some conflicts are easier to resolve than others, but the Lord truly wants all of us to get along and um, to follow his love, his light, his grace and mercy and bring that out into the world. So we're going to pick up with 1 John 2 uh, verse 3. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. So how do we live as Jesus did? How do we know to live as Jesus did? Well, we follow his word, his living word, the Bible, the basis, basic instructions before leaving earth. And we invite him into our heart 
to teach us. He is the true counselor and um, connect with some really good Bible teachers uh, and connect with a really good church that um, follows our wonderful Lord. Picking up with verse nine, anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates his brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. Let's take a pause for a moment. You know, we all do the best that we can with what we have at the time. No one is perfect. The only one that was ever perfect was our wonderful Lord Jesus as he walked around this earth. When we know better, we do better. We can ask the Lord to reveal to us the errors of our ways, repent for them, and then ask him to help us to draw closer to him. I encourage you to spend your time drawing closer to our wonderful Lord. And if you're in an argument with someone, if you're in a conflict with someone and they are not wanting to reconcile, give them some space and time. And remember that their number might just be low and they're dealing with their own issues and their own traumas and just pray for them. Ask the Lord to heal them wherever it is that they are hurting in their mind, body, and spirit. They also may not be following our wonderful Lord uh, closely. So ask the Lord to shed some light and love and grace into their life so that they can see how the Lord wants them to live. They may be in fear. Ask the Lord to take away their fear and to have more faith in our wonderful Lord Jesus. So we're going to uh, finish up with um, verse 15. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes, for, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. As we've talked about in the past, we are a spirit, we have a soul, and the soul is comprised of the mind, the will, and the emotions, and we live in a body. We have so much to take care of, but the Lord is asking us to align with his Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we have a challenge. We live in a broken world and we need to sharpen our ability to see our wonderful Lord Jesus at work. And when we do that, he can shed his light, love, grace and mercy and peace on us. And then we can choose to live in our spirit and surrender our flesh. But that takes practice. That takes practice and it will take some time, little by little, um, I'm going to stop here and we will uh, pick up with part two next time. I don't want to overwhelm you with too many concepts, but I really want to encourage you to spend some time meditating on these verses. Turn to 1 John and read these verses and really meditate on what the Lord is telling you. I hope that this was helpful for you today. I would love to hear from you if you have any comments or questions, or if you would like to schedule a session to go deeper. I am a clinical pastoral counselor, a therapist, a nurse, a life coach. I would love to work with you. My email address is clinicalpastoralcounseling3 at gmail.com. That's clinicalpastoralcounseling3 at gmail.com. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.